So this is a kind of a common information session that we do. All of this information can be found at our website, opp.ca slash careers. A little bit about the OPP. It's a pretty big organization, second largest policing organization in Canada, the largest in Ontario. We have over 5,500 uniform members. So those are the members that you see policing our communities. Those are the, the members that you see trying to make our, our highways as safe as they can. There are also members like myself in other roles, uh, both administratively and with specialty units. Our, our tactics and rescue unit members, our canine members, uh, our recruitment members, our, our drug enforcement members our forensic IDENT members. So there's there's a lot of different areas um, that kind of make up that 5,500 uniform officers. We also have uh, a bunch of civilian members as well. So the OPP can't just run with uh, uniform members. We need people to support us and look after us in a lot of ways. So we have 2,500 members who also do that. So these civilian members, they, they can be um, special constables, they can be civilian data entry, our call takers and dispatchers at our PCC, administrative staff at all of our work locations as well. So there's all kinds of different opportunities. We also have what we call an auxiliary program. These are people, members of the community who want to, excuse me, be involved in policing, so they basically volunteer for the OPP. They apply for the program, volunteer for the OPP. They get a whole bunch of police-related training. They get training on our radio systems, computer systems, uh, some use of force, firearms familiarization type training. Um, and these people are deployed uh, across the province, kind of a community service type of an aspect. They'll do ride-alongs with officers. They'll be at big events in your communities. They'll be at uh, parades doing traffic control and, and different community events. So they they really do get an, uh, an opportunity to impact their communities positively. I think it's a great launch pad into the career. I was an auxiliary member before I was a police officer. Um, it gave me a, a great idea of what the career was about. It does provide a, a nice little launch pad into the career for a lot of people. Our commissioner is a gentleman by the name of Thomas Carreek. Um, he's been with us since 2019. He came over from York Regional Police. He was part of their high high level command team there before coming to the Ontario Provincial Police. Um, and he's done a he's done a ton of good uh, for our organization. And, and I usually highlight, in particular, he's a huge advocate for the mental health of our of our members. He continues to push those bounds and develop us in those areas, uh, which is really awesome. I don't spend a lot of time on this slide because I've kind of talked about most of these opportunities already. Special constables are considered civilian employees of the OPP, and they do a lot of different things. Um, some some are dedicated to security at our general headquarters in Orillia and at Queen's Park in downtown Toronto. They also are responsible for a lot of our court services. They can also be responsible for uh, our offender transport as well. So uh, running prisoners from, from site to site, facility to facility, um, from detachments to court or from many of our correctional facilities to court as well. So those are things that our, our special constables uh, can do for us. And it's, again, it's it's one of those th one of those great opportunities to get a get a feel for uh, a career in policing to see if it fits um, and submitting an application as a regular recruit. These are these are just some fun facts. Twenty twenty, we had over eighty thousand total occurrences, over nine hundred and seventy five frontline patrol hours. We took over one hundred and seventy three million drugs from the communities that we police. I like this stat here: the or four thousand seven hundred ninety one motorized fleet vehicles, and those include our frontline police vehicles that you'll see on our highways. Or we do have SUVs like Tahoes and and Expeditions. Um, in the north, we also have Ford F one fifty patrol vehicles. So there's a it, there's a variety of different vehicles that the OPP uses to conduct its day to day business. Though so that fleet also includes motorized snow vehicles, so snow machines, ATVs, and our marine vessels as well, as well as some of our like big mobile command posts and and those types of things. This is a map of Ontario, and you can see how it's broken down into six areas. So we call these our regions within the OPP. So you can see that there's six of them, the two bigger ones in the north, northwest region, northeast region, um, and then the smaller area to the south um, where about 85% of the population of Ontario resides in west region, central region, east region, and highway safety division. And this is just an idea of where our headquarters are in each of those areas.
So the thing with uh, the one thing with Northwest region and the Northeast region is we have what we call durations. Um, and, and these durations are, are basically they're detachments that if you're offered a position at one of those detachments, you'll agree to spend a, a, a set amount of time at that detachment. So I'll use Armstrong detachment as an example. Armstrong is a small isolated community that is located about two and a half hours northeast of Thunder Bay. Armstrong is what we consider a two-year duration. And the reason it's a two-year duration and, and the reason that we would only expect an officer to commit to being in the community and working in the community for two years is because it is isolated. And sometimes you don't have all the benefits of, of living in a larger community. So we, we, we only ask for two years. With that two years comes a $30,000 financial incentive too. So again... We understand that you may, that may cost you a little bit more for milk. It might cost you a little bit more to heat your home. Um, so there may be some additional expense. Maybe you have to leave the community to get, you know, the odd thing here and there, right? Um, so we understand that. So we try to compensate a little bit financially. Um, and, and for two-year duration, it's $30,000, $30, so $15,000 over the course of those two years. You'll notice on the slide that there's different uh, times time allotments for our durations. There's two year durations all the way up to six year durations. With with more conveniences comes less less financial compensation. So you'll go all the way down to six year duration, which Kenora detachment would be a six year duration. Um, and because again, it's right on Highway 17, it's a larger community, everything you need is there. Um, it's two hours from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, so it's it's really accessible and there's a lot going on there. So again, it's a six year duration. We ask for a little more time there and we only are going to give you eight grand over the, over the six years. So if you get hired by the OPP, the period of time that you are in training, which is roughly five to six months for your initial training, you'll be what we consider a recruit constable and you will be making the scale of $58,522 a year. Once you finish your training, you then actually become a probationary constable. And when you get to be a probationary constable, you get a pay increase, right? So your pay will increase to 74617 a year, right? And you're going to be at that rate for about a year while you're on probation, working with your coach officer. I'll talk about all that in, in a few minutes. And then over time, you're going to go from probationary constable to third class constable to second class constable to first class constable. Okay, that can take, you know, a couple years to get through because they're usually annual jumps. But over those years, you're going to jump up to about 106598 Just under one hundred and ten grand, which is a pretty good salary. On top of that, we have a pension that we pay into. So when you finish your career, uh, you can still, you know, not work and get paid. Uh, we do have life insurance available and there's all kinds of different benefits that we do have available. We have paid sick leave. Um, we do get paid vacation leave. Uh, we do have good benefits as far as like prescription medication, dental, vision, hearing, chiropractic, massage therapy, acupuncture, different things like that. So we have a, a pretty good benefits package that, that can help cover those things for you. Um, and it's not only you, it's for any partner or dependent children that you might have as well. We do have 24 seven support services. It's, it's something that people need to consider when they get into the career of policing, but we do, we are exposed to some not so great things, right? So we have to make sure that we're mindful of that and stay on top of things as far as our mental health goes so that we can maintain a long and healthy career. And the OPP actually provides great support services for that. So 24 seven support services, we have direct access to uh, a number of OPP psychologists. I believe that there are five on staff at the moment. We have what we call um, mental health clinicians in each region as well. So they're not to the degree of a psychologist, uh, but they can provide uh, a bunch of services for us. We also have what we call care navigators, who are the people that an officer like myself, um, say I was struggling with something or I, I you know, had... I needed some support for something that's going on in my life. I would call a care navigator um, and they would help me navigate, you know, and figure out where I could find internal and external supports. So we also have a uh, physiological health sciences coordinator 
um, who helps out with some physical supports that our members might need as far as maybe some fitness stuff or some nutritional support or stuff like that. And most of this information is available at opp.ca slash HWT, which stands for Healthy Workplace Team. One of the fabulous things about the OPP that I try to highlight to people is just the variety of different opportunities that you have within your career. So you could have a number of different careers within the career of, of an OPP officer. So I'll use myself for example. Within my career, I have worked on the front line. I've had the opportunity to do um, work as a scenes of crime officer. So some lower level forensic uh, evidence collection type of fingerprints, photo photographing, um, car tire impressions, footwear impressions, those types of things. I've also been a member of the emergency response team, which has been one, probably one of the best things in my career. And 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 the reason I say that, not, not that other things haven't been awesome, but uh, just something about finding a nine-year-old kid in, uh, in late October in a pouring rain, bringing him back to his family um, because he's been lost for, you know, 12 or 15 hours. Nothing fills my heart like that, right? That's one of the things that's re that, that was really important to me about my career in policing, and that's why I, I really loved uh, the emergency response team so much. I was a member of the in-service training unit for several years. And now I'm in this role in uniform recruitment where I'm interviewing applicants and I'm doing presentations and I'm doing outreach and I'm trying to help uh, mentoring people, trying to help them, you know, fall into a career in, in policing, which is very different than anything else I've done, right? So there's a ton of different opportunities that you can have within the OPP. And this is just a list. It's not comprehensive. It doesn't include everything. Um, just try, kind of to give you a bit of an idea, like drug enforcement, hate crimes, there's human trafficking, Indigenous Policing Bureau, all kinds of different areas. So again, it really depends on you, um, where you want your career to go. Well, our minimum requirements are listed here. So we ask that you are 18 years of age. Hey, that's the only age requirement we have. So one of our common questions that we get asked is like, what's too old? And there really isn't a too old. Episode 21 of my podcast is with a uh, an officer named Nicola Morris who works out of Aurora Detachment. And she tells her story about being a probationary constable at Aurora Detachment in her 50s. So she's had a career in the fitness industry before and, and finished that career and decided that she wanted to be a police officer and she went for it. And now she's a probationary constable uh, in her 50s. A Canadian citizen or permanent resident, an Ontario secondary school diploma or its equivalent. We ask that you have your class G driver's license with full driving privileges, no more than six points. So no criminal record for which a pardon has not been received and be of good moral character and habits. We ask that you're fluent in English, uh, we ask that you have first aid and CPR training. Um, you're going to be expected to um, pass some medical screening, some psychological screening. You, you're, there's going to be a background investigation. Uh, we're we're going to look at all of your references, talk to all of your references. That's just kind of from a risk management perspective. We want to just make sure that we really get to know you before we offer you a position so that there's no surprises. That's the big thing. Um, we ask that you're physically and mentally able to perform the duties of the position of being a police officer, um, because that really does impact your personal safety and the safety of, uh, of people that you're working with and members of the public. You're also going to be asked for six preferred postings. So where do you want to work? We ask you for six preferred locations, and we really do try to place you in one of those six locations. It doesn't always happen. Um, but if we can't place you in one of those six locations, we try to find a location that's very close to one of those six locations, one of the neighboring locations to those six. So I mentioned our areas of assessment earlier, and I said that not one really is weighted any more than another. These are our 10 areas of assessment. Okay, so we want to know about your education, whether what your post-secondary looks like, any post-secondary, whether that's college or um, university, whether it's a trade, um, and also any, I would say, extra training courses that you've done, um, any certificates that you've done, like our Be the Bridge Challenge within the OPP, 
um, different things like that. That all would fall under education. Lifestyle and life experience. So this is a little bit about you. So these are all the things that kind of make up who you are. And these are some of the things that kind of were curious to know what your life experience is in these areas. Community service can ebb and flow in people's lives. Um, and what I mean by that is depending on where you are in life, um, you may have more time to dedicate to your community or you may have less time to dedicate to your community, right? But we do want to see an overall history of some involvement in the community. So overall community service um, is important because a lot, of, a lot of times when I ask about why people want to be police officers, they tell me because they want to have a meaningful impact or a positive impact in their communities, right? Okay, cool. But why are you waiting to be a police officer to do that? What are you doing now? With employment, I like to see, you know, a solid history of employment. If you are leaving organizations, I, I, I'd like to know why. So what is your, is it because you went back to school? Is it because it was a seasonal job? It was, if it was maybe for a promotion or, or a better opportunity, right? Um, so these are things that I'm looking for. So again, what type of leadership opportunities have you had for, with your employment? What type of, what type of training have you had with your employment? So have you been a manager um, with whatever the outfit is, have you been involved? Have you been like the person who trains new new people in the organization? Um, those types of things. And what other training have you had as a result of being in those roles? So you can see how I just mentioned leadership in employment. So you can see how, you know, a lot of these things kind of interlace or they layer on each other, right? Um, so with education, you can get some leadership, right? With employment, you can get some education and some leadership as well as community service, right? So leadership, uh, not, not, I don't think I need to go too in depth with that, but just again, any, any type of, whether it's student council president in high school, whether it's team captain, whether it's, you know, I'm, I, I own and manage my own company, you know, like whatever that looks like for you. Driving, I mentioned earlier. Positive history of driving. I want to know how much driving you're doing in a, in a week and in a, in a month and a year. I want to know what type of highways or roadways you're driving on. What type of weather conditions you're used to driving on. Well, any special licenses that you've had. I want to know about tickets. I want to about, know about collisions or suspensions that you've had. Any special licenses like some of our military applicants, they have you know, all these different vehicles, military vehicles that they're licensed to drive, right? So w what other things ca uh, can you say about your driving and what that, what, what you could bring to the OPP in that regard? Communication skills. So from the minute you submit your application, your communication skills are, are being assessed to some degree, right? So again, how thorough you are with your application, how much attention to detail you pay with your application. You know, did you really take the time to to put out a professional product with your application, your cover letter, your resume? There's a checklist there um, on our website with our application. Follow the checklist. Put everything in the order that we're asking in the checklist, right? That means something to us. Okay, pay attention to grammar. Pay attention to spelling. I usually tell people, get somebody to look it over before you submit it, just to make sure that it, uh, it flows good, everything looks good, right? That is our first impression of you, and you can't make a second first impression. Special skills. This is a tough one because people don't give themselves credit for a lot of the special skills that they have, and they don't sell it enough. So me, for example, um, I've been a community coach for a really long time. I've been a teacher. Um, within the OPP, I was a paramedic in my past life, right? So I have a bunch of special skills that are associated to those different roles that I've played in my life, right? So really take a look at yourself and sell yourself and sell a lot of the things that you've done in your career, like in your lives, okay? Um, are you a drone pilot? Are you a ninja? Are you into Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Um, are you, do you have your ham radio license? Uh, are you, a, do you have your pleasure craft operator, um, certificate or license? Do you have any experience with firearms? Um, so those are just a few. And, and the example, example I give usually is my former inspector in this unit. When I first came in, his name was, uh, inspector Chris Collins, super good dude in his life before he was a red seal carpenter. 
And when you think about carpentry, like what does that have to do with policing, right? Like how is that a transferable skill to policing? Um, but he ended up being involved in what we call our USERT team. And they're responsible for, you know, like chemical, biological, radiation, decontamination type work. But one of their other mandates is urban search and rescue. So there was a, a mall in Elliott Lake, Ontario, between Sudbury and Sault Ste. Marie that collapsed several years ago. And he was on this team and they went to respond to help do the search and rescue at this mall collapse. And being a being a carpenter, his uh, specialty was that he was shoring up the building so that rescuers could get in and uh, do do their jobs. Right. So, again, how does being a carpenter give you transferable skills into policing? Well, who would have known? But it does. So think about what you've done and really give yourself credit for some of the special skills that you have. Motivation, that's the why. Why do you want to be a police officer? What is motivating you to be a police officer? What influences do you have? And this is where people, you know, talk about, you know, being an impact in the community and trying to, you know, all, all of the, the idealistic things that they want to do as a police officer, which are really great. What have you done to try to pursue this career? Being a part of this information session is one of those things. This shows motivation. It shows that you're willing to take time out of your day to educate yourself on the processes that the OPP uses to select successful candidates, right? So this is this speaks to your motivation. So any of these type events, um, listening to my podcast, um, following us on social media, doing some research on the uh, OPP website, those are all things that speak to your motivation. And then fitness, that's probably the most intimidating thing for a lot of <laughs> for a lot of people. So fitness is something that again, it's not a, you know what, I'm gonna apply to the OPP and and uh, I, I'm gonna give myself two weeks to get in shape and submit my application. Fitness is one of those things that I look at it as a lifestyle. Again, give yourself a little bit of time to develop that fitness if if you're not or to remind your body what it's like to you know to do a bunch of running and stuff like that so these are our requirements so like i said level seven on the shuttle run one piece of advice i give people is don't think that okay i'm gonna apply and then i'll have time to get in shape over the course of the three to six months that it takes to process my application we're going to ask you for a video submission of a successful level seven right off the hop so it's very early in the process. So get yourself there before you apply is usually my advice to people, okay? Um, there's an expectation that you pass the Ontario Fitness Pin Test when you report to the academy in your first week, the Provincial Police Academy. It's not a requirement. It's not a you have to do it or you get sent home, but there is an expectation there that you should be able to pass that. And then at OPC, there's a requirement you have to pass the prep test to graduate from OPC. And as well, I would say any chance you get to practice these things, I would practice them. Uh, at the Ontario Police College, when you're there, the OPP does uh, have group runs that we do. Uh, again, it's not a requirement, but it's it's a bit of an expectation because it's more, more team building than anything. But you might be expected to uh, um, participate in some of those. So this is what the shuttle run looks like. So you can see it's a 20 meter length and you can see there's a cone at either end. That's your start line, finish line. And then inside those cones, you can see at two meters, there is another cone and that's your warning line. Okay, so basically what happens is you run to an audio file, you run on the beep, you leave and you run the length, the 20 meter length, you wait for the next beep and you run back, right? And it's just, you're continuously running that 20 meter length on the cadence that the beep gives you. And that beep speeds up over the course of the test. Make sure that they're, you're using uh, the audio file that we have on our website uh, because there are different audio files out there with the time, the beep timing is different on, on a lot of them, right? So just make sure you're doing the right one and, and you can find that on our website. So these are what we call our fitness logs. With your application, we ask you to submit two weeks worth of fitness logs. You can see um, it's, it's one page is one week worth of fitness information, okay? And you can see that the highlighted piece is really like what is involved in a day, okay? What a day looks like. So you can see for Monday, 
There's area, there's space for you to include any information on any run that you've done. If you've tried a shuttle run and what level you got to, any strength training that you did, any other activities like maybe playing baseball or beach volleyball or paddle boarding, whatever that looks like. What you do for stress management. So some people, fitness is their stress management. I know that's, for me, it really helps my mental health. Maybe it's yoga. Maybe it's breathing exercises. Maybe it's spending time with your kids. Maybe it's taking your awesome dog for a walk. We want to know what you're doing and how long you're doing it for. We want to know how much you're sleeping because sleep is a great way to help with your mental health as well. Hey, you need the rest. And we also... Any time that you've done any pin testing, we want to know kind of what your numbers are for pin testing, and you can put in your pin percentage, and, and you can use the scoring matrix at pfpo.org to help you with that, okay? So just because all of these things are listed on Monday doesn't mean you have to do all of this every day, right? We're just giving you area to report this stuff um, in on each day. Okay, so maybe Monday you do a run, 30-minute 5K outdoors at a park, right? And then you don't do any shuttle run. Maybe you do a 30-minute a upper body workout in your home gym. And then you don't really do any other activities. You do a little yoga. You sleep for eight hours. You don't do any fitness pin components, right? And then maybe Tuesday you don't do a run, but you try a shuttle run. You get to level seven. You do a little lower body work and you don't do any pin testing, right? So again, depending on what you do that day, fill it in. Give us as much detail. This is one of those areas that I, I think people usually, when they submit applications, usually can do better as far as the detail goes. These are the components of the fitness pin, a back extension, which is also called the uh, core endurance. So basically your, your hip bones are at the edge of a, some type of a platform and your upper body hangs over and you have to engage your core to keep that position as long as you can. Okay, we have push-ups, either full plank or modified push-ups. We have a sit and reach to test your flexibility. And we have a 2.4K run to test your cardiovascular endurance. So this is what the actual hiring process looks like. So again, opp.ca slash careers, you'll find our application package on our website. There's a checklist. There is a self, what we call a self-assessment tool. And then there's your application that you'll be filling out. All the instructions are there with it. So just do what it's asking you to do. Follow the direction and you should be fine. Try to get as much information that we're asking for as you can, because that will make your application more competitive. Once you submit your application, it will be screened by our intake coordinator. If it's accepted, you'll probably get correspondence, basically giving you a file number and telling you that the next stage is the shuttle run submission. Okay. And it will give you direction on how to facilitate that, okay? So we're not gonna make, leave you guessing and, and have you try to figure out on your own what, what we're expecting. We, there's good, clear communication as far as what we're expecting as far as the, the video submission of the shuttle run. So once you submit that, that, that will be verified and then we will give you some more paperwork to fill out and you will be scheduled for a local focus interview. We do what we call a combined interview. So we do a local focus interview and an essential competency interview all in one. Some services do one and then you get another interview and you do the other. We do it all kind of at one time. If you're successful through the interview stage, then you will be going into our background investigation stage where that's where we do our, our psych testing, our medical stuff happens then any uh, references are contacted financials are looked at securities is looked at um, and then if you're successful there you go into our final review phase you're going to be asked to submit another shuttle run because sometimes this process can take between three to six months we want to make sure that you've maintained your fitness throughout the course of the process okay and then after that you could be offered a position if you receive an offer of employment you're going to be given some correspondence telling you basically report to the provincial police academy um, on such and such a date at such and such a time and you're going to be there for a week so probably seven full days you'll you'll be at at uh, the provincial police academy over the course of that week that's where you get your uniform you're going to sign you know a bunch of papers you're going to talk to the our, our union the opp association 
Um, you're going to talk to, you're going to get some training on different things, probably get some first aid CPR training, just a bunch of different things happen in that first week. And then from that point, you're going to go to OPC for 13 weeks in Aylmer, Ontario. And no expense for tuition, okay? So um, as it stands right now, no expense for tuition at Ontario Police College. Um, after OPC, you're going to go back to Aurelia to the Provincial Police Academy for another eight weeks of training. That's OPP-specific training, so more um, firearms training, uh, practical scenario based training, a uh, bunch of more stuff on our policies and procedures and different uh, areas of investigation and stuff like that. So a lot more training over the course of the next eight weeks. After you're done that, you are going to be sent to your detachment posting. Okay, when you report to your detachment posting, you're going to be assigned a coach officer and they are responsible for guiding you, mentoring you, teaching you, coaching you, um, and they will be doing evaluations on you as well. The training never ends, and that's one thing that I will say about the OPP, is uh, after your initial training, the opportunities for additional training, it, it's incredible.